Hello Steve, I thought I'm going to make a quick video and show you how to set up your webcam properly under OBS from Mac. The video I've sent you there was for Windows and even though the principles are the same, it is always a little bit different on the Mac and I show you some of the intricacies that have happened literally on my other take. I just tried that and then I realized I wasn't recording the video to my screen so hey, apologies for that. You will never see that sadly because there was nothing to see. So. I'm going to go over and create a brand new scene collection here in OBS. That's just the collection of scenes that you've got here. So this group is for another project. You can switch between the groups that you have set up here. So I'm going to go and create a brand new one. I'll call it something like test. And then I'll start down here with one brand new scene. And that's really all you need for this project because you only want one source and one scene, and that's the one with your webcam. So with that, head over here to the plus button and add for webcam a video capture device. And that'll come up with this little dialog here. We can call that webcam. And then that brings up this little window here. And here I can now select my device. I believe I have a couple to choose from here. This is my external webcam, the Logitech one. And this is the one that's integrated into my Thunderbolt display. So I can pick either one of them. I'm going to pick this one here. And that brings up a picture. So hello, very exciting. But the picture, as you can see from the outset here, that doesn't match my canvas resolution right now. And we'll go check that in a minute. And that's because this little icon is ticked here that's called use preset. And the preset makes it really easy to choose one of the resolutions here, but it doesn't give you access to all the parameters that you can tweak in order to get the best quality out of your webcam. So if I leave that on 1280 by 720 and I'll just hit OK, then this looks as if it's working more or less well uh, because my canvas size is probably set to 1920 by 1080. Let's check if that is correct. That's under settings here. And over here we have video. And in video, yeah, I've set it up correctly. I just wanted to check. I haven't used this in a while here. So it's base is 1920 by 1080 and output matches that. So it's also 1920 by 1080. So make sure that is set to those values so that we don't have to, that, that, that we don't put in too much data. Like if you have a, a high DPI display on your MacBook Pro, then you may end up with something that you can pick here that is a bit like this. So I've got this one here, 2560 by 1440, which is four, which is 2K, which is what my monitor is. So if I select that and then hit OK, then I'd have to basically stretch out my webcam to somewhere here, but then that makes the file really large and then we don't get a fluid frame rate and all that. So um, yes, make sure under settings we've got that both set to 1920 by 1080, both the base and the output, both of them. Once that's set, uh, if something like this happens, then these are the outsides of the signal now. So that's kind of everything that's in, in these little bars here, that's on the outside of the visible canvas. So in order to reset that, there's uh, two ways that you can meddle with this. You can right click on the source here, and that brings up the little context menu. And in here, you have the transform menu. And there's a couple of things. So reset transform will probably do that. That'll put this back into its top left corner. Or you can also go and make sure that camera now stretches to the full canvas. And that is with transform and center to screen or stress stretch to screen rather, or fit to screen rather. I think fit to screen. That's, that's what that would do. But since the webcam isn't currently delivering 1920 by 1080, it will now up res its signal. We can make sure that doesn't happen. So let me go and bring that back to somewhere here. Oh, in fact, what, I, what I've literally just shown you and I haven't actually applied yet here. So it'll just be reset transform. There we go. That's perfect. Now we still see that black space here, and that's because currently the camera delivers 1280 by 720, and it can do better than that. So for that, double click the webcam and that brings this menu up again. And I can either try and go with the high preset now. If I were to do that, then I will fill the full canvas. 
because now I guess it is giving out the highest resolution it can do. Yet again, there are other parameters. So untick this use preset icon here. And then I've got a black screen also, not exactly what we want. But that's just because the camera currently isn't being told what resolution to use. So drop that down and see what resolution presets are available on your camera. Some of the lower ones will come in in 16 by 9 and 4 by 3. And those are not what we're interested in. But I have a feeling that's probably what yours may be set to. Something along the lines of this one here, 640 by 480. Because it was 4 by 3, it wasn't 16 by 9. I'm sure that the camera does deliver 16 by 9. So let's set that 1920 by 1080 here as well. And once again, we don't see anything. That's because currently we don't, we haven't told the camera what frame rate we want to see. So leave it on simple FPS values and then just pick 30 from the drop down here. And that should bring us, a, give us a proper 1920 by 1080 HD signal from the camera, which is awesome. So now that should fill the whole canvas. Once again, if it doesn't do that, just go and head over to the transform menu and go reset transform. That should reset anything that you may have tweaked, smaller, bigger, whatever, and it'll snap it right to the canvas as it's supposed to be. There's a couple of other things that can be improved on the webcam. I mean, the footage looks good. I have no complaints and I have still have no idea why Camtasia can't produce something like that, but it can't. But there is there's two hidden things that you can check um, and improve the quality of your footage even further. So double click into this thing again and there's this whole menu at the bottom here that's kind of occluded a little bit so you have to scroll down can you see that here these things input format color space and video range they can all be set to something better than auto so the input format on my mac i only have a single one that i can select here motion jpeg and that's probably fine on my windows machine i have one or two others I don't know why they're not available on the Mac. Then you may have others, depending on the hardware. This is my Mac Mini. It's from 2012, so that's, that's a few years old. So maybe uh, later models have other input formats. So this is literally the compression that's being applied between the webcam and the input of the computer. That's what that does. Motion JPEG is fine. That's OK. You can try others and see if they work any better. I only have one, so it doesn't matter if I set auto or set it directly to motion JPEG. But the other two, color space and video range, they're kind of they're interesting and they're important. So let's look at my large picture here and see how it potentially changes. So color space, we have two to choose from, 601 and 709. 601 is, is essentially what we used in broadcast television in the range of when we used to have terrestrial television and, and all that. That was the 601 color space. But the 709 color space is slightly wider and it delivers a few more colors. So let's see if we can see a difference here. If I change that over, I can see a difference. Uh, so 601 is is okay. It's not it's not bad, but uh, 709 just gives me slightly more natural skin colors here. I don't look that red anymore. I look I look more like a human being actually. So that's that's good to know. And of course that takes up a little bit more data rate, but quality is what what we're all about. And you have to kind of unlock that manually to to get it all out there. And the same thing goes for the video range. So currently it's set to partial, but we can also set it to full. And that is quite a big difference. And this is more to do with how much resolution is in the footage. So look at the darker edges here underneath my face. They will change. So it's currently on partial or automatically selected partial. But if I go to full, then we see that I have a lot more detail in all the shadowy regions here. That's almost as if there's something else that's come out there that wasn't there before. This is a little bit harsher and a little bit more compressed, I guess, whereas this one is just a little bit softer and, you know, every little helps, as they say. So those are the things that I, I recommend. Have a look into that. Your camera may provide other things, but if they do provide these settings, make sure they're set to 709 and the full video range. That'll be exciting. And while we're on the subject, Julia actually reminded me that I was going to tell you, I was going to tell you this. I bought something a while ago and that I, I hardly ever use it these days, but I do do when I 
have to do videos in the evening or in the very early morning where it's still dark outside. So I have over here, I have a large window that kind of illuminates the whole room here. And uh, usually when I have that web, that webcam going, then it's uh, it, it illuminates things fine, but sometimes it does not. And when it gets dark, the webcam gets really grainy and like you know, every camera delivers better results if you have more light available. Every camera turns into this amazing uh, thing that can that can just you know shoot awesome stuff. So what I did there is I was looking into lights, and they're all very expensive, and I really didn't want to spend that money. So I discovered something that looks like this. It's a it's a contraption that you can clamp onto your desk like this. And then the idea is that here you could put a phone in or something, and this is a ring light. So this is usually used for for people who do their own makeup. So they clamp their phone in here, I believe, and then yeah, you can you can expand that and clamp something in here. Could be a little holder. Could even hold a webcam, for example. So it's kind of a, a thing that could hold a, a webcam. So it just clamps onto your desk, and then this up here is a light. And it's it's quite funny what the what the difference is that it makes. So depending on where you put it, if I switch it on, it uh, it it does this. So obviously, you know, in, in the correct space, which is usually behind the desk, so I can't can't show you this. But you can see the difference that it makes on my face. It just evens out those shadows. That it doesn't actually look like I'm using lights, but it does give me that boost that that uh, all the the shadows underneath my eyes are now gone and i look even more handsome than before so uh, it also has it comes with some settings here uh, this one's just the on off button here that just you know switches things off and on and obviously if i have it too close to my face that that's terrible uh, but if i put it away slightly like that there's some controls to make it brighter and less bright so if i just make that a little bit less bright then I can literally just fill it in. And there's a massive difference. Once you see that, uh, it also helps the webcam to establish a good medium between the background and my face. So now everything looks great, but if I switch this off, then the webcams tend to look at the whole picture and do this integral color correction and say, well, you know, on average, the whole thing uh, needs to be uh, more exposed to bring the face out, I guess. And then um, that means my face looks great, but all the background looks a little bit hot and a little bit burned out. But with the help of that, you can just you can just improve it just that bit better. And the best thing about this, these things, they're super cheap on Amazon and they cost about twenty dollars. So or I think fifteen, sixteen dollars. They're called LED ring flashes. I'll send you. I'll send you something. It also comes with something that changes the color temperature from something more red, so to match your surroundings, to something that is more daylight. So this is daylight, this is uh, tungsten, and this is a mixture, I believe. And they, they look all, it really depends on what other lights you have going in your house. If you have daylight coming in, then the daylight setting is great. If you have darkness outside and you have your your regular lamps on here then this will mix really well so now that doesn't doesn't look right but that's because we have the daylight here so another thing that yeah i thought i'd bring up because uh, julia mentioned it and i thought yeah that's actually that's really important to tell you this so yeah I'll, I'll dig out a link there's many many manufacturers switch it off and there we go darker darker face again and um i'll edit this together and send it off to you I'll speak to you soon.